First Kings chapter 15. That's our reading for today. Thank you so much for joining me. And just a little bit of background as we begin this morning. The kingdom has divided. In our reading, the time is approximately 913 BC. The first kings under the divided kingdom are, are Jeroboam, Solomon's former servant, who was king over the ten northern tribes, and then Rehoboam, Solomon's son, who was the king over the one tribe, the southern kingdom of Judah. And this is a terrible time for the people of God. Certainly, it was Solomon's disobedience that, that led God to strip the kingdom in its current uh, state and, and divide the kingdom. Jeroboam turned out to be an idolater, a prime example of selfish leadership and, and will worship, disrespecting and disregarding God and his will. And Rehoboam down in the southern kingdom, while a different leadership style, maybe he too was an idolater, just terrible leaders. So with these men's death, the torch, death, so the torch is passed to their sons. Our reading today really chronicles briefly the reigns of, of some of these uh, future kings. And like all of God's word, this is here for a reason. And there's certainly much that we can learn from, from our reading today. So let's read it together. First Kings chapter 15, as always, we'll, we'll have some remarks to make, and hopefully it'll be a blessing to you today. First Kings chapter 15, thanks for joining me. First Kings 15 and verse 1 says, On the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nabal, Abijam became a king over Judah. Abijam became king over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Mari, the daughter of Abishalom. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had committed before him. His heart was not fully devoted to the, word, to the Lord his God like the heart of his father David. But for David's sake, the Lord his God gave him a lamp in Jerusalem to raise up his son after him, to establish Jerusalem. Because David did what was right in the sight of the Lord and did not turn aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the case of Uriah the Hittite. And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. And the rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did are not written, are they not written in the book of Chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Abijam and Jeroboam. And Abijam slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David. And Asa, his son, became king in his place. So in the twentieth year of Jeroboam, the king of Israel, Asa began to reign as king of Judah. And he reigned 41 years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Micah, the, the daughter of Abishalom. And Asa did what was right in the sight of the Lord, like David his father. And he also put away the male cult prostitutes from the land and removed all the idols which his fathers had made. And he also removed uh, Micah for his, his mother uh, from being queen mother because she had made a horrid image as, as an Asherah. And Asa cut down her horrid image and burned it like the brook kid but the high places were not taken away. Nevertheless, the heart of Asa was wholly devoted to the Lord all his days. And he brought into the house of the Lord the dedicated things of his father, his own dedicated things, silver and gold utensils. Verse 16 says, Now there was war between Asa and Basha, king of Israel, all their days. And Basha, king of Israel, went up against Judah and fortified Ramah in order to prevent anyone from going out or coming in. Basha, king of Judah. And Asa took all the silver and the gold which were left in the treasuries of the house of the Lord and the treasuries of the king's house to deliver them into the hands of the servants. King Asa sent them to ben Hadid, the son of Tamberman, the son of Azion, king of Aram, who lived in Damascus, uh, saying, Let there be a treaty between you and me, as it is between my father and your father. Behold, I have sent you a present of silver and gold. Go break your treaty with Asa, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from you. So ben Hadid listened to King Asa and, and sent the commanders of his armies against the cities of Israel and conquered Ejah, Dan, Abelmacha, and all the Chinnereth beside all the land of the Naphtali. When Basha heard of it, he ceased fortifying Ramah and remained in tears. Then King Asa made a proclamation to all Jews, and none was except. And they carried away the stones of Ramah, the timber which, which Asa had built. King Asa built with them Geba, Benjamin, and Nisba. Now the rest of the acts, or of all the acts of Asa, and all his mighty, and all, that, all his might, and all that he did, and all the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Judah? But in the time of his old age, he was diseased in his feet. And Asa slept with his fathers and buried with his father, was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father, and Jehoshaphat, his son, reigned in his place. Now Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, became king of Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah, and he reigned over Israel two years. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in his sin, which he made Israel sin. And Basha, the son of Abijah, the house of Issachar, conspired against him, and Basha took uh, struck him down at, at, at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, while Nadab and all of Israel were laying siege to Gibbethon. So Basha killed him in the third year of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his place. And it came about as soon as he was king, he struck down all the household of Jeroboam. He didn't lead to Jeroboam many persons alive, and so he destroyed them, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by a servant Ahijah, Shiloh. 
And because of the sins of Jeroboam, which he sinned, which he made Israel sin, because of his provocation with which he provoked the Lord God of Israel to anger. Now the rest of the acts of Nabat and all that he did are not, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the kings of Israel? Verse 32 says, there was war between Asa and Basha, king of Israel, all their days. In the third year of Asa, king of Judah, Basha, the son of Ahijah, became king over all Israel at Tears and reigned 24 years. He did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the ways of Jeroboam and in his sin, which he made Israel sin. I want to begin with a statement this morning, and it's the idea uh, that has really struck me as, as I read this. Leaders today impact the leaders of tomorrow. Let me say that again. Leaders today impact the leaders of tomorrow. That's true. I want you to consider what we just read. So, in Judah, upon the death of Rehoboam, Abijah, Rehoboam's son, well, he becomes king. So, so go back to my original statement again. Leaders today impact the leaders of tomorrow. Now look back at, at verse 3 here. In 1 Kings chapter 15, it says, He walked in all the sins of his father, which he had committed before him, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord as God, like the heart of his father David. Abijah was like his father. He walked in the sins of his father. And no doubt, his, his father had great impact on him. The leaders today impact the leaders of tomorrow. If you drop down in our reading to verse 25, uh, the shift, uh, the, the focus shifts uh, to the north. In, in verse 25, we see the same principle. It says, Now Nadab, the son of Jeroboam, became king over Israel in the second year of Asa, king of Judah, and he reigned over Israel to two years. Look at verse 26. He did evil in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of his father and in his sin, which he made Israel sin. Now, he'd go on to be assassinated, just as God had pronounced by way of judgment against Jeroboam at the end of his dynasty. Nadab is assassinated. Basha takes over, and, and just as you would imagine, this murderer, too, was evil. And, and while not a member of Jeroboam's family, he walked in the ways of Jeroboam, as, as Scripture that tells us, and he made Israel sin. And I go back to this the same premise. Leaders today impact the leaders of tomorrow. Uh, several times in our reading this morning, we, we see the great influence that leadership has on the people. These men are, are charged with the distinction of making Israel sin. Leadership is vital. It's important. It's influential. I'll say it again. Leaders today impact the leaders of tomorrow. But let me say this. While I believe that to be most true, leaders of tomorrow, the next generation, they are ultimately responsible for the type of leaders that they would ultimately be. You know, just because one's father is evil, just because a child grows up in an environment in the midst of maybe an apt leadership, it's not, that doesn't mean that the future leader is devoid of choice, devoid of, of the opportunity to be different. You know, sometimes but we see men who hold on to the sins of the father and they almost render themselves paralyzed and, and use their upbringings, use it in leadership in the church of previous generations, possibly as even a crutch. But then we have choice. You know, right here in this chapter, we see an example of a man who grew up with a father who was a terrible example, a wicked king, a terrible leader, a king who walked in the ways of his father. But Asa down in the Southern kingdom, he chose to be different. He chose to be like his grandfather, or great-grandfather, David. I want you to look back at our text. Asa's dad was Abijah. As we noted earlier, his father, Rehoboam, like his father, Rehoboam, he was wicked. But verse 11, it says this. Asa did what was right in the sight of the Lord, like David, his father. If you drop down to, to verse 14, it says of Asa, but high places were not taken away. But nevertheless, the heart of Asa was wholly devoted to the Lord all his days. More details are provided into these reigns in the book of Second Chronicles, as, as the writer mentions. Verse chapters 14 through 16, you'll, you'll see more about Asa's life. So, so what's my point? Well, I, I go back to the statement that, that I've made more than once. So leadership is critical. Leaders today impact the leaders of tomorrow. There's no doubt about that. But leaders of tomorrow are responsible for the type of leaders that they'll ultimately be. So what do we do? Well, those of us who are leading in some capacity right now, and I would argue that's probably just about all of us, 
We need to recognize the great responsibility that we have to lead in such a way that would bring people to the Lord as opposed to pushing them away. We lead in such a way that we give the next generation a picture of godly leadership, leadership worthy of imitation. You know, as fathers, we lead our children to God. We show what godly headship in the home looks like as it's defined by sacrificial love of our wives, their mother, as wives submit to this Christ-like leadership and love in the home. The next generation, they see this. In the church, elders display Christ-like shepherding, caring for, feeding the flock, protecting the flock, unselfish Christ-like principled leadership, standing for the truth, never compromising, but serving the people and loving the people and caring uh, about the people, communicating with the people. You know, leadership matters. And I was struck by that in our reading today. I would encourage you to take some time and turn over to Ezekiel chapter 18 if you have some time today. We see some of the same principles that we've addressed um, this morning. Leaders today impact the leaders of tomorrow, but leaders of tomorrow are responsible for the type of leaders they will ultimately be. Let, let, let's set the example. Thank you so much for joining me today. Would you pray with me, please? Our Father in heaven, Father, we are so thankful that you have blessed us with the perfect example of leadership by way of your son. Father, he set the perfect standard for us. And Father, we pray as leaders in our home, as husbands, that we would love our wives as your son has loved his church. Father, we pray for the next generation of leaders. Father, we realize that they will inherit a thing. And if it be your will and this world stands, that they will inherit a thing, a very sinful world. And Father, we pray that they would be equipped to lead your people. And Father, as leaders today, may we set the proper example. Father, we're so thankful for men who have the chosen to lead your people in your church, their desire to, to be elders. Father, we know that this is a difficult task at times. And we pray for them. And we're thankful for them. May you bless them with unity. May you bless them with wisdom. And Father, may we follow them as they follow you. And may we make it a, a, a joyful Thing by way of our submission to their godly example. Father, we're so thankful for all that, that you are doing for us, all the many ways that you've blessed us, for answered prayers. We're so thankful. So thankful that Sister Betty's mom was able to come home from the hospital. So thankful that Sister Marion was, is doing well enough to get out of the hospital and they get moved into a new facility. Father, we know that will be better for Kim and the family. We're so thankful for them, their example of care for her. Father, bless us this day. Give us opportunities to serve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.